Hello, and uh, welcome to the Gender Equality Academy webinar series. My name is Vasya Madesi, and I'm the project coordinator of the Academy. I'm very happy to welcome you in yet another uh, webinar uh, today. So happy 2021. This is the first session of uh, the year. So uh, I hope it's uh, a good one for all of you. This is a joint webinar and we are very happy to co-organize it with the GECO project and Aetna project. And the topic of today is gender equality in responsible research and innovation. This is the first session. We will have one more next uh, Wednesday. And uh, before we start with the main presentations, I would like to let you know a few more words about uh, Gender Equality Academy, what it is, uh, what we're doing. And uh, of course, uh, then I will pass uh, the floor to uh, my colleagues. So there are some technical issues today. And, um, I will uh, try, okay, <laughs> to change my slides. So uh, what gender equality uh, is about? Uh, our challenge, the challenge that we're trying to tackle is that there are many gender equality programs, uh, many projects and uh, a great uh, gained knowledge. Um, the gender analysis, uh, it is really appropriated within research projects and uh, there is a small proportion of researchers and practitioners that are familiar with theoretical and methodological concepts of gender and feminist scholarship. So what the Gender Equality Academy does is that as an Horizon 2020 project, uh, it uh, implements a high quality capacity building program in research and uh, innovation. So I will try to move forward with the slides. Just give me a moment. What we uh, offer is uh, actually a series of uh, training programs uh, in different formats and of course in different titles and different topics. Uh, for now, what uh, we can do is to offer only the uh, online version of those programs, but uh, those include interactive webinars, interactive workshops that are still online, train the trainer sessions, we will also have online summer schools, and of course, an open collaborative online course. We are a consortium of partners with a strong experience in gender equality all over Europe. Uh, all the videos uh, and all the material that we have prepared is uh, available on our YouTube channel, Gender Equality Academy EU, so you can find them there anytime. What is coming up soon is that uh, we have one more session uh, next week, as I mentioned at the beginning. And of course, we have an online training that we'll be very happy to see you there, uh, which is a roundtable on engaging men in gender equality uh, work in research organizations. This is on the 29th of January and one for February, acting against sexual harassment in academic and research organizations. Today, uh, this is the agenda. We will start with um, an introduction, of course, from uh, Elsa to, uh, as the project coordinator of the Aetna system to what the Aetna system is all, all about. And then we will pass on uh, two very interesting presentations from Rosanna and uh, Santiago and Elsa. And we will have also a Q&A session which uh, will be moderated by uh, my colleague, Maria San Giuliano from Smart Venice. Thank you uh, very much for your attention. Uh, we are live tweeting uh, with uh, impressions. So we will be very happy to see also uh, your impressions. Thank you. I will pass the floor to Elsa now. Thank you so much uh, for, uh, first of all, for the invitation to, uh, I, I try to share my screen it's here. It's okay, I think so. Okay, thank you for uh, the invitation from uh, the Academic and from uh, GECO project. Uh, well, in a system, uh, is the acronym of Ethics Governance System for AI in Higher Education, Funding and Research Centers. I'm the project coordinator. Uh, and uh, well, this project started in uh, January in 2020. 
20. Uh, we have three years of project and we uh, spent one year yet. Um, and uh, while it's uh, on uh, one of the topics that are funded by the European Commission that has as one of the focus on the um, grounding our, our practices. That means that we uh, should to uh, move from theoretical perspective to practical perspective. And well, our objective of EBNA system is to develop and implement an SS governance system for grounding good practices in RRI, in higher education, funding resource centers and, uh, and resource centers. Uh, that means that we will to validate, well, implement and validate a new formal organizational structure uh, within the management structure to ethical governance in the six different uh, institutions, two universities uh, to, uh, in Spain and Norway, two funding resource centers in Estonia and Bulgaria, and two technological parks in Austria and uh, Portugal. Uh, well, the participants uh, should to develop uh, throughout the project and involvement of the institutions um, in, um, and, and try to uh, share our expertise uh, in the five dimension of AI, research ethics and integrity, gender equality, open science and citizens engagement, because the ethical governance is the purpose of governance that is the sixth uh, key of the RRI is the purpose of our project to implement it. We are 10 partners from, uh, with two third links, six advisory boards and uh, 19 um, associate partners. And we uh, invite you to find an assistant project in the website and see our uh, 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 progress and results that we uh, will share in uh, following the open science uh, thought uh, in our, uh, in, in our uh, page. Well, this uh, general objective uh, uh, try to achieve five specific goals. The first one is to undertake a comparative analysis, dissemination, and exploitation of results in, on RI systems uh, in these institutions. The second goal is to define and implement a number of core ethical orientation or guidance principles. Uh, one of them, as I uh, mentioned, is the gender equality. That is the purpose of this webinar. Uh, third is to implement advice structures to all the stakeholders involved in research and innovation in these institutions where we are implemented. Um, the fourth objective is to help rise the ethical standard of the science infrastructures across Europe, including underrepresented countries and new beginners on uh, RRI. And five, uh, to warranty ethics and fairness in the activity of research and innovation, as well as an open and inclusive dialogue uh, with all the identified stakeholders, where the public engagement with citizens and civil society organizations and citizens associations in science will be pursued and always in line with the SDGs uh, objectives. Well, um, uh, right now we are uh, working, uh, as I said, uh, in, in, in this in, uh, defining of uh, which kind of ethical uh, governance system we can uh, build and uh, take into account the difference between uh, the novel and the expertise and also uh, with the difference that there are in between universities, uh, technological parts and fundings and the size of these institutions. We are working on the on the model and the conceptualization and we um, uh, expect that uh, uh, in, in June of this year, we have uh, a result on this, and then we are uh, preparing our implementation uh, in uh, the institutions, in the six institutions. We are starting right now uh, with the preparing uh, the knowledge of our institutions to try to implement um, um, before, um, uh, before the summertime. Well, um, and the system uh, is um, 
um, want to find uh, impact in different um, aspects. One is in the institutional impact in our institutions in professional and social and economic areas because, uh, well, the modular structure of building blocks that has the EDNA system is a structure uh, that can has uh, the uh, format of an uh, ethna office or a management of ethna uh, ethical management uh, of the AI keys in, in the organization. And this um, fundamental or grounding uh, block uh, can um, grow up through the institution using four tools that we are defining. Uh, one is the ethical code on good based on good practices in the different uh, I keys and that can be can inspire and can uh, promote the policies in the institution through a quality a responsible research and innovation. Another tool is the ethics committee that we are defining to try to to uh, help uh, uh, and to promote the deliberation on the issues that are not clear in our society on um, ethics, ethical issues on research and innovation. The third block is the ethical hotline uh, to provide these uh, open um, channels with all the stakeholders um, to achieve in the, uh, in the institution uh, the high quality in ethical research and innovation. And uh, the uh, last tool is the progress indicators to report on AI. We are defining these flows and how to, imp the different organization they can uh, um, involve to uh, use in, in, in the ethical governance and uh, try to provide the, the issue and, and, and good ways to develop uh, ethical uh, governance in our research and innovation organizations in Europe. Thanks for your attention. I, I, I hope that uh, you uh, uh, see interest in our project. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Elsa. Um, my name is uh, Natasha Sega. Hello to everybody. Uh, today, with my colleague Maria San Giuliano, we will be the moderator of this uh, webinar. Before uh, start, um, I will just uh, uh, like to remind you about some technicalities and how this uh, session will work. So um, we ask you to use the chat box to communicate with the other attendees or to report technical issue to the host, while we ask you to use the question and answer button only to type your question directly to the speakers. Uh, you can start typing also during the presentation when we will collect all your questions and uh, post them to the speaker in the final question and answer session. I'm glad to introduce you to our first uh, speaker, Rosanna Sanahuya, who is a researcher in, uh, oops, sorry, <laughs> in ethics and the part of the demographic group and the Jome First University and lecturer of journalism. She's the a project manager in the Ethna System project and her research lines include the responsible research and innovation, communication science, citizen science, and so on. Rosanna, without further delay, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Natasha, and thank you uh, to all the, organiz uh, the organization, especially uh, our colleagues from GECO and GEO Academy. Uh, good morning, first of all, to all the attendees. Uh, the following presentation, I, I will say it. Uh, one moment, please. Uh, okay. One moment. Uh, this presentation was created by Professor Santiago García Campa, uh, who has extensive experience on the field of the gender equality 
and who is present today among the panelists too, and me both, uh, Professor Garcia Campa and I, are members of the Edna System Projects Work Team. And during the, the following presentation, we will address the topic of understanding the relationship between gender equality plans and responsible research and innovation plans. Uh, in the first place, we will be discussing how RRI and gender equality planning are related each to other. The wording of the question implies two different aspects that should be noted to answer it properly. Firstly, the question tackles equality and RRI from a practical approach, not a theoretical one. In other words, it does not consider how RRI and equality are related in theoretical terms, but rather how they should be related in a practical sense. More specifically, when planning each of them. However, there is no praxis without thesis, so it is necessary at least a simplified way to address this theoretical connection and then point out its practical implication. Furthermore, it will be interesting to know the main findings in literata regarding the relationship between RRI and gender equality. How the relationship between RRI, RRI and the definition of gender equality has implication regarding the way gender is articulated within RRI and the most appropriate mechanism for implementing this dimension. In the topics literata, problems have been identified when it comes to implementing measures to gender equality. For example, whether to consider them mandatory or voluntary, linking them to other area, areas of RRI, or identifying the department responsible for implementing them. Problems are also identified when assessing the results within RRI. On the other hand, there is a general lack of understanding of the mechanism underlying this dimension which means that the meaning of gender equality is constant, constantly being negotiated. Moreover, a particularly important issue is to contemplate introducing a gender perspective into RRI and, in other point of view, to consider gender equality as a key area of RRI. In fact, gender equality is one of the six uh, keys of RRI established by the European Union. And secondly, at a practical level, the divide is how a certain tool can be related to the fulfillment, pursuit or manifestation of RRI and gender equality, that is, its planning or action plans. Now we, we consider interesting to highlight what RRI and gender equality planning uh, have in common and also what are the difference, main difference. In both scenarios, uh, it is a matter of planning, that is developing a plan, methodical arranged for the achievement of a given goal. That way, both can share their, the traits of this technique, diagnosis, goal, strategies, execution, monitoring, evaluation, indicators, and, and so on. Another similarity could be that both are implemented in, a, in an entity or organization. So they share promoters, receivers, resources, goals, and so on, although it has its nuances, for example, priorities, culture. Uh, this is about the similarities. And regarding the differences, one of the most evident is the level of development. Currently, quality planning is much more developed at RRI planning. Uh, another noticeable difference is the level of regulation too. For instance, in Spain and other uh, European countries, equality plans are a legal obligation for companies or public uh, administration. 
And when it comes when it comes to corporate culture, equality can be considered more developed than other right to either by legal obligation or as a result of corporate corporate social responsibility. In the same way, the amount of knowledge regarding gender equality is much greater than in RRI, if only because of how long ago the research started. Finally, they are in no way overlapping plans. Their aims are different. This has some consequences so that, for example, those who are responsible for the RRI plan cannot also be responsible for the equal opportunity plan. That means that rather than absorption, they have mutual feedback. Uh, based on these observations, the following option can be considered. Uh, the gender focused RRI or gender equality as another uh, key content or dimension of RRI. Obviously, Europe believes in the later, according to the Mori report. More specifically, its development has not been so much from the perspective of planning as from that of monitoring. Moving into more specific aspects of gender equality in RRI, we can consider the three dimensions that the European Commission assigns to equality content. The reduction of vertical and horizontal segregation of women in the research and innovation, the incorporation of gender perspective in the policies and in the financing of research and innovation to trigger a structural change, and in third place, the integration of gender perspective in research and innovation projects. Uh, gender equality is a fundamental uh, aspect in, in the system project as a key, key of RRI, as Elsa has uh, explained in her presentation. From the perspective that we are working on the project gender equality planning and the resources that have been created to carry it out as equality unit, equality officer, gender perspective, and so on, can be used as a reference when RRI planning, taking into account the necessary modification. In this sense, we consider that equality plans are a fundamental tool for the gender area of RRI. They can assemble the three dimensions mentioned, uh, mainly by relating them to the Morris indicator, more specifically. The implementation of Edna system should produce in our university, Universitat Jaume I of Castellón, Spain, the following aspect. In a personal dimension, the university will evaluate its second equality plan and approve its third equality plan. And also, uh, it is produced an increase in the number of family research staff at the university by 4.3% to, to reach 50% of the total. Regarding the research policies and its financing in the organization, uh, an example uh, could be including a balanced presence of groups in gra grant in aid criteria. In addition, our university will increase by 5% the presence of women in the authorship of publication indexed in Scopus and also uh, of patents as well. When it comes uh, to the research measures in the organization, an example would be to be in training to integrate a gender perspective into research project and furthermore the research plan of the Universitat Jaume I will give additional value to research projects that sufficiently integrate the gender perspective. 
And to conclude this presentation, we would like to raise some open questions for the reflection. Uh, in first place, the relationship uh, between RRI and gender equality, we consider that is problematic because why RRI uh, is fundamentally voluntary, much of the content of gender equality is mandatory. For example, university are required to have a equality plan and an equality unit by law, not as a consequence of RRI. The relationship cannot result in the dissolution of gender in RRI. Another point for reflection is the observation that the gender indicators produced, produced by the Mori project are largely aligned with those ordinary used in university equal plans. And in third place, Edna system has not chosen to plan for RRI exactly, rather than that, it has conceived, uh, designed and will test an RRI governance system with gender as one of its key areas. And finally, the evaluation of the results after the implementation of EDNA system will allow us, uh, we expect, to, to compare those obtained in the area of gender with those achieved in the other areas of RRI, such as public engagement, open access, research integrity, science education. Our hypothesis is that they will be better in general because of the higher level of institutionalization of the gender area compared to the rest. And this is our presentation. Thank you, you for thank you all for your attention. We hope that uh, you found it interesting. And Professor Garcia Campa and the rest of members of the Edna Assistant team can ask all the all your questions uh, at the end of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rosanna, for your interesting presentation and for your interesting point of discussion that uh, you have just uh, displayed. Uh, I'm sure that uh, they will provide um, a lot of uh, questions for the, our question and answer session. But before going there, let me introduce to our uh, next speaker, which you actually already uh, know. Uh, now we will have a presentation from Elsa Gonzalez Esteban, who is um, the scientific and technical coordinator of Aetna System Project, as uh, she already introduced herself, but also an, an associate professor of moral philosophy at the Xiaomi First University. Um, she will conduct her presentation and uh, um, with the help of Santa Santiago Garcia Campa, uh, already mentioned already also by Rosanna, who is a lecturer PhD in the Department of Labor and Social Security Law, and that is also the expert of the Ethna System Project in Gender Equality Issues. Uh, without further delay, uh, Elsa, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, to everybody. Uh, I hope that uh, well, uh, in fact, the two um, the two presentations are related, and I hope that uh, we can have a, a good uh, 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 question and response in in, in the uh, at the end of this presentation. Um, well, I will I sharing my screen. And uh, the focus of this part of the webinar is on the institutionalization gender key. Uh, that means that we, uh, or my presentation is uh, more focused on uh, how RRI um, is understanding right now uh, the gender. Uh, um, okay. Could you hear me? Yeah. Uh, the gender issues. Then uh, the question here, uh, well, as I mentioned before, is that this presentation, as the other um, presentation, have been made uh, in a 
team uh, and Santiago García Campa, I, we want to agree, uh, uh, say again uh, and, and tell thank you for all the work that he has made uh, to this uh, uh, study because uh, of course there are some interview, intervenes in the, uh, on the ten, uh, uh, gender plans and the uh, eye concept, but of course, uh, eye concept is really new to, uh, right now. And then uh, uh, there are confusions about what we can expect from uh, this concept. And if uh, we are losing some of uh, the uh, um, research and the knowledge that we have about how to institutionalize a gender perspective in organizations if we only uh, um, depart from the AAI context. Then uh, I want to ask you first, uh, just to see if you are active in this webinar too, uh, we want to ask you uh, to ask to this uh, short poll. Uh, I will to send the link through how the, oh, sorry, because then... I'm se I sent it, uh, Elsa. It yeah. is already in the chat, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, well, then I move to my presentation. Then I uh, introduce you the short pool. The short pool uh, is uh, with one question. Uh, I ask you that you indicate how essential uh, to you, from your expertise or from your knowledge, uh, the following criteria to develop a uh, good research and innovation. That means uh, if you consider that ethics, research integrity is a criterion that is strongly essential, essential, and sure you don't know if uh, it's uh, make a difference to use it little essential or not essential at all to achieve a good research and innovation. Please, uh, I ask to all the attendants to, to answer the, the short pool. There are uh, seven criteria, ethics, gender equality, open science, public engagement, science education, social justice and sustainability. Um, there are 14 answers. Uh, we can wait for more. Uh, um, well, meanwhile, I, I explained to you that this question have uh, been made uh, on a large uh, survey uh, with other questions in uh, two large survey uh, scale surveys made by Morris in two, uh, from 2013 until 2018. And there are um, uh, an article that we provide at the end of this uh, presentation, the reference of the article uh, with the results of this. Uh, in this alert survey, uh, they asked for only for five of these uh, criterion. The, uh, the first five, ethics, gender, equality, open science, public engagement, science, education. However, I um, use the social justice and sustainability criterion too, because there are two criteria that are uh, right now in the literature and the expertise uh, from the AAI concept. Uh, they are, are um, we are discussing to introduce to as criterion to define the responsible research and innovation. Then after our, well, we have enough answers. We have, as you can see, um, oh, it's not, You could, can you see uh, my screen now with the result? We just see your presentation. Um, but not the figure of the responses. No, no. Oh, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. Uh, because here, okay. Well, I explained you, I, I have the, here the, in front of me, I seen that your, in your answers, uh, uh, you show that the ethics is very uh, strongly essential um, with um, that uh, uh, 
gender equality, uh, 50 of uh, the responses answer that are essential and other 50% show that is strongly essential, I mean 50-50 more or less. Open science uh, uh, is considered for the attendance is uh, more or less in 40% uh, consider that is strongly essential. Um, 35% essential and 30% uh, unsure. Uh, uh, on public engagement, 50% uh, uh, no 60% consider this is essential. Um, only 20% consider strongly essential and um, unsure at 20%. Um, well, uh, sustainability and social justice uh, has a higher rank. Um, uh, essential uh, and uh, strongly essential to and science education is uh, considered less essential than the others. Well, you answer uh, from an intuitive point of view <laughs> uh, is more or less uh, as uh, was the results in this uh, large scale survey that I mentioned. The survey uh, was published by Burrell and Rockleslie in this uh, in this uh, paper uh, in the review of evaluation and program planning, um, and as you can see in this graphic, uh, when they uh, ask about the quality criterion for good research, they consider uh, that. Uh, ethics, open access, and uh, public engagement as the three criteria that are more important, only 75% are uh, very strongly essential as criteria to uh, define a uh, good research and innovation. And 67% of the researchers consider that gender equality uh, is a uh, quality criteria as 65% consider that uh, science education is a quality criteria. Well, what this uh, show us is that uh, uh, gender equality is one of the issues that of the criterion uh, that we, when we thinking on a good or, or or right uh, research and innovation is considered. However, uh, when we enter to see which kind of good practices should uh, we promote, uh, we uh, which kind of mechanisms, we find uh, different mechanisms with uh, the study of many of uh, some limitations. To, um, to introduce in our organization and institutionalize it. Uh, this is the focus of my intervention now, to show uh, what uh, happens in this uh, area. The first question that I want to share with you is that the study of the gender issues, like other I key issues on the agenda of the European Union, predate the formulation of this approach by the European Commission in 2011. That means that it's very new. While the literature on gender equality in research and innovation is abundant and has a history dating back to the 90s, it is not the same case with its relationship with RII. No in the theoretical field of its conceptualization, uh, no in practice and nor in existing perceptions of RRI. Several contributions assume that gender equality, um, and uh, we want to underline these three papers that we uh, bring you the reference at the end of the, um, of the presentation, uh, that are uh, writing in 2000. Uh, 18 and 2019, several contributions I say assume that gender equality covers three aspects, as Rosanna mentioned be uh, before. Following the proposal of the European Commission, um, first is the, that women's integration horizontally and well as hierarchically in all or organizations working on research and innovation. Um, 
The second uh, is the integration of gender perspective in policies and funding initiatives for the promotion of a structural to change to identify implicit and explicit barriers and the integration of uh, a gender perspective in research is the third uh, issue that covers gender equality conception of RRI. Um, well, if we think about uh, good practices uh, in research and innovation area, um, which kind of good practice do you think that could be effective to promote gender equality? This is a question, an open question uh, to you. Uh, we can, Natasha, could you, uh, I share in the question. Um, and Yes, I can put it in the chat or they, they can use the chat to, to, to answer directly. Okay, great. Because if, if I, oh, I see here. Okay. Mm. The question then is, um, if uh, which kind, just to say one, uh, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, um, which kind of um, pra good practice could be effective? Because if I leave this, so if, if to show the can, the results, exactly, you, if not, I, I can see. It. Yeah. Uh, you know? um, otherwise, you can uh, exit from your sh exactly. screen sharing and okay. share directly. Okay the whole screen. Okay, great. Okay, I can see that, for example, you say uh, mm, equality plans, gender office, forcing institutions to comply with gender equality measures, keep up to date statistical report, uh, well, make it obligatory, but uh, uh, the, the question is how we, we do it, which kind, of, which kind of mechanisms, raising awareness. Uh, well, at the end of the, our presentation, or my presentation, uh, we can move uh, to these answers and then uh, we can see um, if the what the literature and the studies that, that we are uh, following now, uh, if they consider uh, the ideas or so the good practice that you consider that could be effective. Um, meanwhile, um, we can see or share with you which kind of different mechanisms uh, are using for institutionalization, gender dimension in research and innovation. There is no single mechanisms, of course. Uh, we can identify at least these uh, six mechanisms that are using right now in many institutions to, uh, to institutionalize gender dimension. The first one is to develop and implement gender equality plans. This is the start of uh, the mechanisms in organizations and institutions and or create gender friendly workplace culture. And I think uh, from the literature and from the expertise that we have find in our case studies in Edna system project that the gender friendly work workplace cultures is working uh, right now quite well in some institutions to uh, provide not only the mandatory but the voluntary and the self uh, awareness on the uh, relevance of gender equality. Uh, sorry, the second um, mechanism is monitoring system using gender statistics and indicators that is related with some of the good practice that you have mentioned. Uh, the third is to establish gender equality as a criterion of quality or excellence in research, but uh, we need to conclude that. Then uh, we find in the literature and the uh, practices that, for example, introducing a gender perspective in the international mobility of research personnel, uh, it has been a good practice um, mechanism. 
Another is to apply mechanisms of evaluation of results in gender equality. Fourthly, um, uh, we find the, uh, to implement national legislation, uh, firstly, sorry, to implement national legislation on gender equality, approve letters or agreements with organizational or institutional principles, apply quotas, and the take programs or initiatives with funding or modernize specific requirements for obtaining fund funding, providing information and support structures for small or local organizations. Although the implementation of a specific national legislation on gender equality institutionalizes this dimension, it also limits its since research and innovation institutionalize this dimension. Uh, are only focused to fulfill. It, it, this is a problem, the, the least checking, but not to change the culture of the organizations. Um, and finally, the mechanism that uh, is uh, using to institutionalize gender equality is training, as this uh, both project that uh, here, GA Academy and RECO is uh, working, training in equality. Um, but in the research, uh, researchers in all the levels and identify good practice in gender and equality. If these are the different mechanisms for institutionalized gender, um, we can see uh, that there are different problems or limitations uh, of those mechanisms and tools and the uh, literature uh, is focused on this limitation in the last uh, five years with uh, very interesting um, uh, researchers and, um, and, and, and I think that uh, proposals to, to, to face up this. Um, uh, for example, have been no general problems and uh, specific limitations. I will focus first in the general limitations. Um, it has been known the existence of many problems, implementing and evaluating gender equality in research and innovation, and the general absence of a systematic understanding of the mechanisms underlying this issue. For example, having to constantly negotiate the meaning of gender equality, as has been noted by Rosanna also. Um, some contributions suggest a particular problem, reducing gender equality to one of the keys of AAI, instead of mainstreaming gender to integrating all the uh, AAI dimensions that mean in ethics, uh, that means in public engagement, with, uh, that means in science education and so on. There is an agreement on a specific articles and reports on gender equality in research and innovation that persistence of gender barriers in the academia and research that must be addressed. Um, these are the general limitations that we find, and there are another specific limitations relating with the three aspects that gender equality covers in AAI concept uh, or key. Um, remember that uh, we have, have three uh, aspects that covers this uh, concept, and um, related with the first one, uh, the specific limitation is that the increased presence of women in all organizations working in research and innovation, both horizontally and vertically, uh, we can find the glass ceiling, sticky floor, the slippery leathers, and particularly leaky pupillane. Due to both gender biases or stereotypes, that means the gender uh, bias, and to the very job in security in science and innovation. The imbalances particularly evident in the STEMs. Other obstacles are the existence or not of reconciliation policies, or the existence of a specific programs to improve women's skills in career development. The, uh, relating with the second aspect covers by uh, gender equality covers, the introduction of gender perspective in actions or the financial in order to produce a structural change. 
That means lack of specificity or requirements and a monitoring of the result. And thirdly, uh, on the integration of gender perspective in research, uh, we find that we need, and I think that you, you the, 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 both projects that are uh, uh, the host of this webinar are uh, working very well on, on, on these issues, uh, they develop content, uh, quality content and training on gender, but focus on research and innovation, not only just to uh, be in a general way, but also focus uh, in a specific way. While the most implemented element has been the increase in women's participation in research and innovation, the one which has received the least attention is the introduction of gender as a content of the research and innovation training uh, for the researchers. Um, one factor that explains these differences is the auton autonomy of research and innovation organizations, especially among universities, regarding definition and implementation of these areas. Um, this, is, this idea is to carry out uh, a broad policy mix, which individually supports women's careers, research and innovation, and at the same time, to exceed discriminatory institutional structures. Uh, a mixed approach also targeted to other contributions. Um, well, finally, um, a good number of good practices mentioned have been institutionalized. Um, most of them are imposed by the legal and regulatory of uh, each country. Um, we focus uh, on the self in our project in the self regulation that is need to commitment and policy from high level management and to provoke a change in the culture that we have in our institutions. Um, the good practices that literature uh, show that uh, that has best results, um, not like least checking, but to change. Uh, maybe slowly, but uh, change the culture and to approach better institutionalization is the gender training, the gender equality plans, and the evaluation proposal of research through whole gender perspectives. Um, I think that all of them are where in your answers in when I ask you for the good practice that you expect that could be effective. Um, and uh, the purpose of Edna system is to um, focus uh, on institutionalized, uh, very concrete actions uh, with, uh, with that are focused on these good practices. Well, here you have the references. Uh, here is also uh, uh, the the reference to the Mori. Um, uh, mm, inform report that uh, you ask in the chat uh, then we can share it with you uh, and then you can uh, follow the literature on this thanks for your attention uh, it's the time to you the floor is for all the attendants thank you again for uh, Gender Equality Academy of Fonjeco to uh, invite Edna System to uh, assist our partners uh, with you in, in this um, purpose to improve uh, the knowledge uh, on gender equality in research and innovation uh, um, area and practices. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Elsa. you. <laughs> <laughs> for Thanks your presentation, yeah. Um, I will give the floor to Maria. Yeah. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, thank you to both uh, our uh, speakers. Uh, indeed, uh, when we um, accepted um, the proposal from Jacko to um, uh, to host this uh, webinar within the G Academy um program uh, we found it really inspiring to uh to trigger a reflection on how um embedding um gender equality into a broader framework such as uh, responsible research and innovation 
could uh, actually uh, show potentials in terms of take up within uh, research organizations. So I think that uh, several um, inputs uh, just came from your uh, from both your presentations presentations um, covering both such potentials and uh, some uh, risks or hindrances, right? So um, my initial comment and then to leave the floor, um, of course, to, to our participants, hoping that more um, uh, questions and comments would, would come. Um, are precisely on, on these uh, two aspects. To what point uh, in your experience um, uh, you, uh, you found that uh, this integration of gender equality into a broader framework uh, was helpful to, um, to get more consensus from uh, decision makers in particular? Um, but also uh, up to what point um, you, you experienced um, sort of uh, dissipating effects, right? We all know how to work on institutional change to steer institutional change processes uh, requires a lot of efforts. Uh, so um, handling uh, such uh, efforts on multiple levels and on multiple topics uh, could actually um, also present, uh, present some risks. And finally, uh, I was interested I, I, I wanted to react to what um, Rosanna was mentioning on the um, obligatory or not option, right? Um, it, it, it very much depends, I guess, on the, um, on the national uh, policy and legal frameworks, as you also stressed. Um, but I think that uh, part of this question will, um, in a way, um, it, it is also connected uh, to the uh, upcoming uh, Horizon Europe requirements um, that the Commission is going to set up and which will uh, basically uh, ask um, all uh, participating institutions to uh, Horizon Europe to have gender equality plans in place uh, as, a, as a criterion to access the fundings. So these were my initial comments. Thank you. Oh, okay, Elsa, do you want to answer or Professor Santiago Garcia Campa? Maybe. Who is the well, main expert? Uh, okay. Well, I, I just want to say that, of course, we see that it could be a, a, a risk uh, to, for, for one hand, it could be a risk to handle the six uh, issues uh, that the European Union uh, has identified as, uh, as keys of uh, responsible research and innovation. How, however, at the same time, uh, to think together and providing an ethical uh, and governance way easier to the researches could be a good idea, a good idea if we train to the, from the first stage uh, to our researchers and we create a culture of uh, responsibility in, in the broad sense to all the keys uh, in, our, uh, in our researches and in the calls that we or the funders uh, um, develop to ask for the uh, researchers uh, for the fundings. I mean, um, I think that it could be a risk if we uh, don't define in a clear an easier way. But if we establish in an easier and clear way which kind of minimums uh, we consider uh, from uh, the shared knowledge about what means uh, that our research is uh, uh, enough open for uh, uh, enough um, accessible 
to uh, the public, uh, the citizens, um, or in the same way in gender equality, uh, if we dis decide this kind of round or the minimums, uh, it could be that our research and innovation uh, could be better. I mean, from an ethical point of view, that doesn't never means that if you develop a research that is very gender equality, you know, with all them very excellence, but you don't try to uh, show or, um, uh, or, or to to move your researches to be more integrative, uh, honestly, uh, don't have slippery practices and so on, then maybe this research is not uh, very responsible to, I mean, do you understand me? I mean, this is not uh, the win-win in, uh, in a responsible research and innovation is that all the uh, values that we consider that are important to define a good practice uh, should be achieved by the proposals that we make uh, or what the research that we uh, uh, try to do it. This is uh, in an in a ethical point of view, the answer. Thank you, thank you, Elsa. Any questions or comments from, uh, from our audience? We have a few more minutes to go uh, before wrapping up. Um, I see there, uh, there is a comment in the chat, right, from uh, Jana. Um, yeah, it was about the horizon requirements. Um, they are familiar with, yes, of course, it received quite uh, some uh, publicity since the research and innovation days, right? Yeah, so this might trigger more institutions, even if um, in, the, in their countries there's no legal obligation uh, to, um, to have a, a JEP in place, indeed. Um, I was uh, curious to, um, I was, uh, I like the approach from Rosanna um, on, um, um, I mean, implying uh, no absorption, but rather uh, mutual, um, mutual feedback. Um, anyway, I found it uh, really, really interesting. Any yes, comments? There is also um, a comment uh, from Brigitte that uh, okay. with what is already answered by Santiago, but I would like also to, to point it out loudly to our speakers. Uh, she wondered if uh, RRI as compared to gender equality is too complex to be easily implemented by institution, like uh, let alone individual researchers. Uh, with, because there are so many different dimensions to be taken into account. And she asked if there is a set of indicators that cover all those uh, dimensions. And Santiago rightly answered um, that the best indicator are those provided by uh, the Mori project. But what do you think about the complexity uh, of the RRI uh, uh, dimension compared to, to the gender equality? What is the best? Uh, approach we can have with our array. Uh, this is again both to or Rosanna or. Uh, yes, uh, I don't know if Elsa or Santiago can say, I think are different pers perspective and dimension and array. It's a concept very, very new and it's developing, it's development, it's uh, still <laughs> more slowly, but I think that they, they are complementary more than, than one inside the other. That is the idea of the presentation of Santiago and I, maybe with projects like Edna System, we try to integrate and work together the two dimensions and we hope to to have a good result i don't know if santiago want to say something more or elsa 
Well, as uh, Santiago said in the uh, answer in the question and uh, answers uh, panel, uh, well, the AI uh, um, focus could be as a opportunity, maybe, uh, from the research and innovation field, I mean, from the practice uh, in the research uh, to move uh, in, in more detail in some of the issues that covers uh, or that uh, the ethical, the, the gender equality will cover. The question is that as uh, we have uh, mentioned in our both presentation is that it's like again and again issue to reframe uh, the concept of gender equality. It's like to try to invent uh, the whole again, and it's not necessary. And many times when you wait the AI calls or the AI, uh, or the, uh, the MORI, for example, uh, from a gender point of view, uh, is lacking uh, many of the advances that have been made from the gender and research and innovation for, uh, for example, the, the, the gender plans that are in some of the universities that are in, or in advance that, uh, or that cover more indicators that the, in practice that the uh, more recent indicators show us. But this is like a, a shower um, or uh, at least for some countries that are not uh, um, as uh, awareness of the how they can do it, um, it could be a good driver to find a change uh, in uh, some of our countries and in the research and innovation um, organizations. To some countries, it could be uh, to less and to others, it could be <laughs> too much. I mean, um, but this is the cross-cultural uh, difference that we have in Europe. And then maybe uh, the as one of the conclusions, if you uh, um, um, uh, permit me uh, to say in the, from this webinar is that um, maybe AI is not enough to develop a gender perspective in practice in the research and innovation is not enough, but it's a good driver. Uh, it's a good driver to many um, uh, organizations that are uh, trying to follow uh, the uh, the normative way that uh, or the top down that the European Commission is uh, using the Horizon 2020. I mean, it could be a good driver. It's not the solution. I mean, it's not the only solution, but uh, it could be very useful. And for the universities uh, or higher education or centers uh, like. Uh, technological parks or fundings in Europe that want to know which are the minimums that uh, the society in Europe consider that we should to achieve when we develop uh, research and innovation and that want to legitimate their activities, uh, I could cover uh, a minimum, okay? And in, in, in the case of uh, the uh, gender uh, issues, maybe, uh, or the promotion of the equality uh, between men's and uh, women's, that is the uh, expression that we prefer uh, from our team. Uh, in this promotion of the equality uh, of treatment, uh, it could be one of the drivers, but uh, we uh, consider that it should be complemented with the um, uh, plans of gender uh, and that uh, the, pro the, the voluntary and the mandatory should work together. This is the, the other, uh, of course, um, uh, main idea or strain idea that I want to uh, underline. 
Thank you, Elsa. Uh, this is in fact uh, is uh, also linked with one of the questions that we received from from Lydia, who is actually asking more about re possible recommendation on uh, practice uh, to convince male decision maker on how much they win if they will introduce and promote the gender equality at their university. And uh, I'm reading also the comment of, of Puya who is uh, uh, stating that the greatest challenge in non-European context, as a Asia in particular, is the lack of incentive among the leadership to work towards gender equality or RRI in, sub in such a substance substantive way, especially in senior management position, which remain predominantly male. Uh, the view remains that as long as there is equality of opportunity, all processes are fair and no group is disadvantaged. Would, how would you comment on this? We can have a final comment and then we, we can go to the conclusion of the, the webinar. Yeah, to, to, uh, from our point of view, from the system, this uh, question on the incentives, uh, is one of the questions that we are uh, tackling in, in, in many of our um, in our meetings because uh, of course the project has involvement of six uh, institutions but uh, it was in the DOA that means it was in the um, in the grant agreement and so on but right now we should to implement. And when you go from, uh, I'm talking to you very uh, frankly, when we talk from the theoretical uh, um, agreement and, and move to the practical agreement, you find that there are many obstacles. Uh, although you have, or we have in this case, the commitment of the uh, level management in, in the six uh, organizations, but then you can find very barriers uh, behind in the in the middle uh, level, or you can find that the, 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 the in the first level you, you need to create a culture. In some organizations, this is made it, but in others not. And uh, we need incentives, but we need to create culture, and uh, we need to uh, above all to show or oh, this is the third question is to show uh, that this is a question of justice but this is a question of brothers too i mean uh, this is a question of justice uh, or ethical question uh, but this is a question of brothers too because uh, in the research arena um, uh, we have um, statistics and we have studies that show that the, um, the, the women's and the men's, they are a, a, a little imbalance in the successful or the best successful or the excellence in some of the uh, careers in, in research, in women's in the first steps, but how they find the glass ceiling and then it's a question of prudence or strategically, because many, as I said, um, in the specific uh, limitations, um, mm, some of our uh, good uh, brains are from women and they find the uh, uh, lucky people in or the glass selling or so on and so on or uh, a lack of, uh, in, the, in the organization, a lack of uh, conciliation uh, plans. And then that provokes that uh, we uh, miss or that uh, we um, uh, lost these brains uh, for research and innovation. And this, this is a question of justice, but this is a question of problems too, I mean. And we need to, to show very clearly uh, to our institutions, but we need to incentive to also uh, in the middle level and to pro, I, I think that also to give them uh, instruments, tools, be clear to, to use it in the uh, institutionalization, not just discourse, and, uh, but also be clear uh, um, ways to uh, uh, institutionalize, monitoring, and evaluate it. 
uh, we need um, dates uh, uh, that uh, um, and results about the results. And I think that um, uh, this is a question of time, but we need to uh, focus on the on these two because with these numbers and with these results, we can explain better that this is a question of uh, best results. Thank you very much, Elsa. Thank you very much, Rosanna, Santiago, for your presentation and your inputs. It was really, really interesting and topical, as uh, uh, someone commented in the chat. I think we are perfectly on time to end up with this webinar. I just uh, wanted to invite you to the next, the second session of this webinar that will uh, happen on next uh, Wednesday, uh, the 20th of January, at the same time of today, which is which will be related uh, on, on this, but we will have more hints from the GICO project on this topic. Thank you very much for your participation. And uh, I just want to remind you that as soon as you will close this webinar, an exit questionnaire will pop up in your browser. Uh, please, uh, uh, we are very curious to know uh, your opinion about this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody, or our speakers and uh, participants to the next one. Bye bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.